Have you ever felt irritated, annoyed, angry, just frustrated beyond belief? And then thought about it for a moment and realized it was because you'd gone hours without a snack. And in fact, you were just hungry. So what hanger really is, is your brain's misinterpretation of a physiological signal as an emotion, when in fact, it's a need for food. Interception is your hidden sense of the internal condition of the body, from your heartbeat to hunger or energy levels. Across the world, many labs have shown that mental illness, psychiatric disorders come with disruptions in interception. But I don't just think interception is relevant to mental ill health. I also think it's very relevant to mental health. We live in a world where physical and mental health are considered totally separately. Maybe it hasn't been as obvious to us that things that are happening in the rest of the body, whether it's the immune system or functions in the gut, have just as much to do with those emotions and what our brain is doing. I'm Camilla Nord, I'm a neuroscientist. I work at the MRC Cognition and Brain Sciences Unit at the University of Cambridge. And here I lead the Mental Health Neuroscience Lab. What we're really interested in is how our brains and body interact and shape our mental health in periods of mental ill health, such as in the context of psychiatric disorders. My lab has become really interested in how our metabolic state informs our cognition, our decision making, and ultimately our mental health. And the reason for this is that I think it is a crucial neglected area in interception research. How do we learn which food has calories? We need to do that to survive, but it's only rarely studied in humans. Almost all the work has been in animal research. So we've had to really kind of go outside of our comfort zone here as neuroscientists to begin to explore and delve into interactions between the metabolic system and these cognitive processes that we think are dysfunctional in mental health problems. Thanks for coming, Lucas, and for taking part in our experiment. Now, Hugo, tell us what all of this is. So here we have a couple of different uh, juice drinks. Uh, Lucas has taken these home with him for the last week. One of them has got sugar in it, and the other is artificially sweetened, so he shouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. But we think that there is an unconscious sensing mechanism by which he may be able to discriminate between the two. So first, uh, I've got to attach this device to the back of Lucas's arm. This is a continuous glucose monitor. So it's a medical device that's often used by people with diabetes, but we're obviously using it here in a, in a research setting. And it's going to allow us to tell how good Lucas is at regulating his blood sugar levels. We're going to give him a, a task where he's going to learn the correct actions to take when different pictures come up on the screen. And at the same time, we're going to give him the flavours that he has been learning about for the last week. We think that if he tastes the drink that was previously associated with the sugar, then it's going to make his responses quicker and enable him to learn more quickly. So the continuous glucose monitor is giving us a window into how much sugar Lucas has really absorbed from the drink while the task in combination with the juice is giving us a window into his external learning. Different clinical conditions might come with dysfunctions at different levels of this metabolic process. For example, conditions that affect your physical health, like diabetes, come with a disruption in the signal, how you regulate your blood sugar. But other conditions might have more to do with how you interpret that signal, how that signal influences your thoughts and behaviours, something like what we're measuring on the computer task. We know that people with depression tend to have um, increased risk of metabolic disease, like diabetes and high blood pressure, um, which all points to perhaps a common mechanism underlying both depression and uh, diseases of, of metabolism. Interception isn't just relevant to neuroscience research. It can also be really relevant on a personal level. To explain that, I've brought in an expert, my friend and yoga teacher, James. So I am a yoga teacher, but I'm also an expert by experience. I use my experiences of physical and mental health problems to 
help shape research and services and the knowledge that we have about the mind and the body. So I've had a mixture of mental and physical health problems for quite a long time, since I was quite young. And a lot of them I've never really understood what's going on in my body. And after quite a long time, it was obvious that I wasn't very well and I wasn't really coping. And I went to ask for help. And I had these explanations that I think were quite top down. It was about my thinking and that I just needed to think a bit better and then things would be fine. Whereas actually now, looking back, I think it was much more about what was going on in my body from the ground up. And a really good example of that, I think, is when I had these periods of low blood sugar, which I now know were low blood sugar, but when I just felt really like the world was ending, pretty much, and I didn't know what was going on, people told me that it was depression or that it was anxiety. Uh, and actually being empowered with that information, even though it came pretty far down the road for me, has helped me to manage my mental health much better and completely rethink how I think about my mental health mm -hmm. and how I understand my well-being as a whole body kind of process. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I think it kind of speaks to the idea that interception sort of has these multiple components, one of them being your perception of the state of your body, which is what the clinicians misattributed your symptoms to, but then one of them being the actual signal from the body, which in your case was the kind of origin of your problems. The problem is those exact symptoms are so non-specific, like at the level of our experience, feeling dizzy and lightheaded, it can come from either. I think actually after a while, I almost lost connection with these signals because I didn't know what they were. I didn't know how to interpret them and I almost shut them down. And I'm really interested in how bringing back my awareness about these different signals can help me to manage better. Yeah, there's a really interesting line of work showing about the importance of sort of accurate awareness of internal states of the body, like for example, accurate awareness of when your heart beats, and that that might be one important variable in mental health. And I think kind of training yourself to have this more accurate awareness can for some people maybe even help them regulate the actual signal, slow down their heart rate via their breathing. Your expertise in yoga really intersects with this because you're essentially training practitioners to have some sort of interceptive awareness about you know whether their joint is in pain or not whether they have discomfort in a certain pose or not yeah and i do think that there is some value and i found that in my experience in simply being more aware of your body where it is in space how you're breathing how your energy is and i think that it's so encouraging to see more research being done in this area because it feels a really important gap for me in my own experience and my own care as well. In the future, I see my lab moving towards a precision medicine approach to mental health. And what I mean by that is that interoception and interceptive dysfunction doesn't necessarily underpin every single person's experience of poor mental health, and certainly not in exactly the same way. Its utility could be to kind of give a fingerprint on what about someone's mental health is disrupted and whether approaches targeting interoception might benefit that particular patient. One of my hopes in doing research like this is not just these lofty aspirations about 10, 20, 30 years from now how mental health treatment might change, but actually on the ground when we're treating patients at the moment, we tend to neglect physical health if we're treating mental health and vice versa. I think in many cases, treating patients with a fuller picture of measuring and treating physical health problems concurrently with mental health problems could be one outcome of studying and communicating interception research to the public.